Hello, my sweet shabby loving friends. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new, my name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. Each week, I share kinda shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. Now, if you have been following me for any length of time, you know I usually post these videos once a week. Things have been a little nutty around here, including the death of my sweet little dog, so I've not had a video up in a while, but I am so excited to be able to get back into things, back into crafting, and share some fun ideas with you guys. The first thing that we're going to do, we're going to be painting our tin cans. Then I'm going to be using my Iron Orchid Designs crockery stamps and some DOS clay. So that is going to be a really cute, fun project. And I have a couple of other cute little things to show you as well. So the first thing we need to do is to get some paint on our tin cans. I did take some fine grit sandpaper and I kind of buffed over the surface just to rough it up just a little bit to take some of that shine off. So that way our paint is going to adhere a little better. I am going to be using the Rust-Oleum chalked paint in linen white to cover my cans. I won't be painting the inside because I am going to be putting some florals in there and they're just going to be really, really cute. I also took the sandpaper and kind of went around the inside of the edge just to make sure that there was nothing sharp and I wasn't going to cut myself when I put my hand in there to start painting. And these are probably going to need two, well they're definitely going to need two, they may even need three coats. Normally I don't dip into my paint can, but it's almost empty, so that's why you'll see me dipping into it. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint the rest of these, and then while these are drying, we'll move on to rolling out our clay. So I'm going to take a good portion of this out because I'm not sure how much I'm going to need. Very pretty. So I'm going to just go ahead and roll out a little more clay and put a couple of more of these in here. So I'll have five of them and then we'll go ahead and get these attached to our cans. For our next upcycled project, we are going to be using mason jar lid rings and I've already painted all of mine in the color of plaster and that's a Waverly chalk paint that I pick up from Walmart. And I have 19 of them. And I'm going to be decoupaging some strips of book page onto the sides. And for the stem of my pumpkin, I just stuck that handle in there. This is actually one of those old toilet brush handles that I had used when I had made some shabby pumpkins. I had three of them and I didn't use this one. So I'm just going to be painting this one in the color plaster. It's just easier to paint things like this. Just sticking them in some floral foam. All right, I'll set that over to the side and let that dry. I'm going to be using my Mod Podge to decoupage my book pages onto my mason jar rings. Put some Mod Podge all around the outside ring here. I also became a plaid ambassador which I'm so proud of. And Waverly Chalk Paint is a plaid product. They sent me these brushes. These are a plaid product. Mod Podge is a plaid product. Your folk art paints, there's so many different things that are actually plaid products. I'm just laying that up against the little rim right here because that's gonna help keep that paper on there straight. Put a little bit underneath there where it overlaps. And then more Mod Podge on that. Look how cute. Isn't that adorable? That is going to be so, so very cute. Okay, so our cans are all dry. It actually only took two coats. And now we are going to be gluing on our appliques that we made with our stamps. I'm using Tight Bond. And I actually had these lying over some other cans 
so they wouldn't dry flat. Put a little bit on the back. Take a nice little brush and spread that glue all around. I'm just going to very, very gently push down to make sure that that's going to adhere because there's all these ridges here on the can. And that's why I didn't stamp the can with the stamps because I knew that the ink would not get down in between all of those ridges. So I thought, well, we'll just go ahead and glue these on here. How cute is that gonna be? I love that. Move along to the next one here. That looks good. I wanted these to dry just a little bit so I could apply a little bit of pressure without worrying about distorting the image. Isn't that pretty? My goodness, these are just so cute. And there's that one. These are gonna look so good. Okay, these dried so well. They look amazing. So now we just need to get some wax on these. We are going to assemble all of our little mason jar rings into a pumpkin shape. Then we'll be moving on to my last project, which will be to combine this lamp with this wood round to make a cake plate. That is going to be adorable. So I'm gonna adjust the camera so I can show you how we are going to wax these and assemble this before we move on to our last project. So to assemble our mason jar ring pumpkin, I have a 15 inch piece of twine here. And we're just going to take our twine and run it through and we're gonna thread our lids our jar rings onto our piece of twine here. And I've cut it longer than I actually need it. And I can trim it off once I'm finished. So now that I have them all strung on here, I'm gonna form them into a circle. And now I'm going to tie this tightly and knot it. That is already so cute. And then I'm gonna put this in here. I am gonna glue that. Now I can go ahead and trim these off because I like how that looks. I'm gonna need some glue around the edge here and put that in and hold it till it sets. And I am using a mat so that way I'm not gonna glue it to my table. That's what we have so far. Look how cute that is. And now we need to embellish it. So I've got some pieces of foliage here. I've got some various ribbons. I'm just gonna see what looks cute. Look how cute that is. I really like this. Let's see if I want some of these on there too. Yep, I like that. And that's what I have so far, and I'm gonna find a little something to go in the middle of that. I think this little solo wood flower will look cute there. I like this, I'm gonna put a little more of this on there too. And there we go. I think that is so, so cute. So we're gonna go ahead and get these waxed and then I will show you how you can achieve a similar look using your printer and some labels from the Graphics Fairy. And this is the Valspar Clear Satin Sealing Wax. I'll be putting that over the entire surface. Then I'll be going back with the antiquing wax in the detailing of our stamps here to bring all of that out. I'm gonna pour a little bit out, get a little on my brush, work that into the bristles, and then just start waxing my piece. And I definitely want to make sure I'm getting all into those crevices because when I put my antiquing wax on, I don't want it to grab onto that and make it look muddy and then I'm just going to wax the rest of the piece. 
I haven't painted the bottoms yet. I am going to do that off camera. And when I do the bottoms, I'm actually going to be sealing that with a brush on polycrylic. And I'm gonna let that wax set up on that a little bit and move on to the next one. I'll check back in in a few minutes after I finish waxing all of these cans. So now that I've let this set up for a few minutes, I'm gonna go back with a lint-free rag and I'm just gonna blot off the excess wax. And then once I get all of this blotted off, we're gonna go back in with our antiquing wax on our clay appliques. And that's just gonna be so pretty. So now we are ready to put our antiquing wax all in those little recesses there. So I'm using the Folk Art. And you can see this bottle has been well used and well loved. And there's plenty in the lid. So I'm gonna take some, work it into the bristles, and then swirl it on my lint-free rag. And now I'm going to go inside all of those crevices and it looks like a mess right now but when we start wiping it off it's going to look great and i'm making sure that i'm not getting it all around the outside i just want it in that design i'm going to take my rag and just blot off the excess then i'm going to take another brush here and I'm gonna put a little bit of the clear wax on there so I can just start blending that in. And it helps to remove some of that other where it's gotten a little dark. When we wipe it back again, all of that is left in there. Look how beautiful that is. You can keep that clear wax on there to take off as much or as little as you like. I think I'm happy with that. I think that is gorgeous. So let me go grab some gray paint and we'll do another one with some gray. So I'm gonna get just a little bit of the clear wax out onto my paper plate. Then I'm going to add just a touch of the Waverly chalk paint in the color Mineral. And I'm just mixing that. So I'm going into those details. I may need to use a darker gray. It might not be enough of a color contrast, we'll see. It's pretty, but it's not enough of a color contrast. So let me grab a darker gray paint. I'll be right back. All right, so now we're gonna try it with a little bit of the wax, the clear wax, and the Waverly in the color Steel. And let's see if that provides enough of a color contrast for us. And let's try it again. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Look at that, oh, that's gorgeous, love. So that is the clear wax and the Waverly in the color steel. I like that a lot. And I think I'm gonna do another one in some of the black wax and see what that looks like. And this is the Annie Sloan black wax, but you could use any black wax. And I'm gonna dab it into those recesses. And again, it just looks like a mess until we go to wipe things off. Let's see what that's gonna look like so far. Oh my, that might be my favorite. So far, look at that. That's gorgeous. Okay, wipe that back. Oh my goodness. Mm hmm. I like it. That looks really good. If you didn't like that, you just blend it over with some clear wax. And then when you wipe again, you would wipe back even more of that black wax. That's gorgeous. I think I like the black wax. Isn't that pretty? I'm just gonna go all over this. 
I am going to take some clear wax and just kind of clean that up just a little bit. That is just gorgeous. I love these. All right, let's get some cuteness applied to this little can right here. Now, I have already used some of these other labels, but I will put a link for you below where you can print these off from the Graphics Fairy. But what I do is I tape a piece of tissue paper onto some cardstock so it'll go through my printer. Then you want to take some scissors and just cut out the image that you are going to be applying. And I'm just going to cut and leave barely any white on the sides. And my tissue paper has a shiny side and a matte side, but I make sure that I print it on the matte side. The shiny side tends to smear. And you want to make sure after you print it to let that ink thoroughly, thoroughly dry before you attempt to do an image placement. This one is the Mod Podge Matte. So what I'm going to do is roll half of this over, apply my Mod Podge this way, start in the middle, and tap that down with my brush and gently work out any wrinkles. And we'll come back and put a top coat over that in a minute. Now we are going to gently roll this back, apply our Mod Podge, and again we're going to start in the middle, tap that down, and just very gently work it from the middle out. Now I'm going to gently go back over the top, and again I'm going to start in the middle and apply my Mod Podge from the middle outward this way and from the middle out this way. Now I'm just going to very gently take my brush and work the paper into the ridges from the middle out. Don't push very hard or you'll tear your paper. And I'm trying to work out as many bubbles as I can and there we go. Isn't that pretty? So it's not exactly the same as this, but boy does it look close. So if you don't have the clay and the stamps or you don't care to do this technique, you can definitely do this and it is so quick, easy, and cute. So Mr. Shabby did some engineering on the little lamp base itself to make it more stable. So I'm going to be putting some spackle in the hole where the electrical cord went, but in the meantime, he cut two pieces of round wood for me because even though the lamp itself is very solid and very heavy, this rounder is much, much larger than the lamp itself was. So to give it more stability, he cut a nice big round piece to go on the bottom and also on the top. There's also some screws in here that he will be mounting to the top of the rounder just like that. That is just going to be so pretty. So I'll do the base, I'm gonna paint it white and then I'm going to use the antiquing wax on the top and coat it with some butcher block oil so that way it's actually going to be food safe and it's just going to be so cute. So I'm going to go ahead, get some paint on this, get some stain on this, and we will continue putting our projects together. So I have applied some wood filler right here to the hole where the electrical cord was. And so while I'm waiting for that to dry, we're gonna go ahead and apply some antiquing wax mixed with water to give some color to our board here. So I wanna start at the bottom first because I want the last thing that I do to be the top so it just looks all nice and smooth and pretty. So I'm gonna just apply this, brush this on, and this is going to act as a stain for our wood. And it just gives it a gorgeous color. And again, I'm gonna take my time 
with the sides because I don't want to have it run on the front. It's lightening up in some of these areas as it's drying. That is just going to be gorgeous. And as that is drying, we are going to be adding florals to our tin cans. All right, we got a lot of fun stuff here. Now this, I thought, turned out adorable. And I'll show you how I did this with just a regular old lunch bag. I like using the liner with the paper bag because it covers up the inside of the can and also gives your flowers something to stand up against. So it helps them not just fall into the can. And I did the same thing with the paper bag here and just a single little flower there. And I think that looks great. But you don't have to use these paper sacks. This one, I just put a book page in there. How cute is that? You could also use fabric. I'm actually gonna do one with the fabric. You could use felt, just anything that you have on hand, wrapping paper, scrapbooking paper, anything that is going to fill your can and give your flowers some heft is going to be a-okay. Now for the paper bag, what I did is I folded it in half and then I cut along that crease line so that you've got your bag just like that. Now where this little indention is here, I put that to the bottom of the can and I put the seam at the back. And then I just rolled over the edge. So I have the back standing up and the front lying down, but isn't that cute? And we can put anything that we want to in there. This looks cute. That needs to be about that tall, so I need to cut it about right here. There we go. Yeah. See, that's super cute. Then wrap some twine around the top there, and you're good to go. You could also put pieces of scrap fabric like that would look really cute. Tied in a bow on the side there. That would look really cute. And I think I want to use this fabric. So I'll cut it right there. Tuck that in. Fold that over. I think I may glue that. That way it would fold down like that and it wouldn't come apart. See, even with the little fabric in there, that's super cute. I could pull off a couple of these little Christmassy looking pieces here and put a pine cone in there. I'll get all of this staged up so you'll see how I finally decide to do the florals in the end. But these are just a couple of examples of how you can stuff your cans and put your florals in there just to give them a little more um, it's all dry and I sanded that off so I think I did a good job there and now I'm ready for the coat on the front of this because this is now nice and dry and then I'll start getting some paint on the base of the cake plate and I'm not going to paint this because that's going to go up underneath the topper itself but I think this is just going to be so very pretty I'm going to put felt on the bottom. And for all of these areas that are heavily detailed, I'm just going to kind of pounce my brush in there just to get them into all of those details. And then I can come back and smooth everything out. All right, so I'm going to leave it like that. And then when it dries enough for me to handle it, then I'll come back and paint all up underneath here. So that's all we're going to do for right now. My goodness, this is just gorgeous. I put three coats of paint on this, and I did sand between applications of my paint on these two wood pieces, because sometimes when you put that paint on there, even though it's smooth to begin with, that paint can actually make those wood fibers kind of stand up. So I do give a light sanding between 
those coats and I used 320 grit sandpaper. I also went back and darkened this up a little bit and I'm telling you when this gets put together that is just going to be stunning. So now I am going to be applying the butcher block conditioner to this so it's going to be food safe. And I'm just going to squeeze a little bit out on my cloth here and I'm going to rub in the direction of the wood grain. I am going to be applying about three different coats so what I'm going to do is rub this on, let it sit for about 20 minutes, then come back and put another coat on. And I am just going to coat this surface again in the direction of the wood grain. And I'll go around the edges. And that's all I'm gonna be doing with this. I'll check back with you guys in a little bit when it's time for me to wax this base. So Mr. Shabby put this together and it is just stunning. But instead of putting wax on this, I decided it needed a little more protection than that. So I went ahead and put on three coats of the Rust-Oleum Matte Clear and it just turned out so beautifully. So now all I have to do Touch up the screws, put the felt on there, and get everything staged up for you so you can see just how beautiful it all turned out. you so much for joining me today because of you I have reached 5,000 subscribers and I am truly grateful I hope you enjoyed today's upcycled projects and that you'll try a few of these for yourself come back next week for more kind of shabby but always chic crafty inspirations and until then my sweet friends be blessed <music>